I would like to call the April 29th, 2020 regular meeting of the Fenton Community High School District 100 regular board meeting to order. May I may I have a roll call, please? Yes, Delaware. Here. Peyton Howell. Here. Figueroa. Rigo. Here. Ramirez. Here. Chief Alpong. Wiedemann. Here. Sorry. Whoa. <laughs> Lily really wants to be counted. <laughs> Are you there? Oh, okay. Um, all right, then we have a quorum. Sorry. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, under God, 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 God indivisible, liberal, and justice, liberal, liberal, justice, and justice for all. all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, James, could you please read our Fenton mission and belief statements? Our mission statement set states, cultivate success mm -hmm. and passion. Uh, learners through rigor, relevance, and relationships. <sighs> Our belief statement, successful, passionate learners thrive when we champion innovative teaching and engaged learning, school and home collaborative uh, effectively. We provide a safe, secure, and caring environment. We infuse social, emotional learning into academics and culture. First thing empowers our learning community. We prepare students to fulfill their civic responsibilities. Okay, thank you, James. Um, do we have any requests for public statements or comments? There are no public uh, comments on my email uh, between those times. Okay. Um, thank you, James. Then let's move on to the district reports, please. James. Sure. Thank you. I, I hope everyone is doing well and healthy uh, during this crisis. Just want to confirm that Principal Azarevich is here, CSBO. Um, um, uh, Bruce Martin is also online, as well as Director of Curriculum, Michelle Papanicolaou, and lastly, our Assistant Superintendent, uh, Dr. Benson. Dr. Benson. Our first topic of the day is basically to go over the priorities of COVID-19, as you know, there are three, food, safety, health, and wellness of our students. Uh, number two, continued education, and number three, communication. Um, it, back to number one in regards to food and SEL, basically. FHS continues to distribute food Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to noon. As of today, we have distributed over 22,000 meals. We will continue this uh, needed service and relief through the end of the school year, including summer semester. The comments from our students and parents when they picked up food are very positive, positive and full of gratitude. Fenton is the stable source, stable support for a lot of people in Bensonville and Wooddale. We should all be proud. In regards to continued education, remote learning is moving forward. Teachers are executing the curriculum on their virtual platform. We need to applaud our staff on being dynamic and engaging. Student attendance fluctuates between anywhere between 90% to 93% attendance rate. More information will, will be provided during the review of the student and parent survey later on um, uh, this board meeting. In regards to communication, just want to highlight two or three things here. First one is the town hall meeting. The, the virtual town hall meeting took place last Saturday and posted on the FHS YouTube channel. The meeting is part of our efforts in addition to Wednesday words, weekly email blasts, email helpline, and social media posts to communicate with our families and answer their questions. I will host another meeting, I'm thinking in about a week or two. Uh, we thought it was very successful. Student and parent survey. These surveys are complete, and I will review the responses during our board meeting to this evening. In general, the responses are positive and helpful in regards to gathering feedback from our parents and students. This is another example of how we are gathering information and communicating with our students and parents during this crisis. Uh, moving on to graduation and prom. Um, due to the COVID-19 uh, and governor's order, the tradition in-person graduation and prom will now take place in May. 
we will have a virtual graduation on May 17th. Um, as all of you know, there is not, there's not enough testing, no mitigating meds, and no vaccine uh, for this virus. The big question is, are, are we going to have an in-person graduation uh, as we know it? Yes, we are. We just don't know when. We will post a tentative in-person graduation date uh, in July, okay, assuming that it's number one safe and the orders are lifted. If we can't have it in July, we will we will postpone it to a um, November or December in gra uh, in in person graduation when it's once again pending that it's safe. And if that doesn't work out, we'll push it again later on that spring. So yes, we are going to have an in uh, in person graduation. We just don't know when. Uh, in regards to prom, the prom as we normally know it traditionally celebrated in May in person uh, in a banquet hall. Um, will not take place in May. Um, Principal Lazarevich will uh, have a final decision next week. Summer programming, summer school and summer camps will be virtual and remote this school year. Uh, facility in initiatives will be put on hold, but once again, due to COVID-19 and how it has affected the economy, the facil facility initiatives that we have uh, tirelessly worked on for the last six months will be put on hold until further notice. I have communicated with STR um, and in our administrative team, and I'm communicating with the board as well. Uh, we're gonna have to just put this on hold when, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back together when it's safe. Um, letter E, meeting with the local taxing body, BIG and CAC. I virtually know, uh, as you guys know, I virtually meet with both Bensonville and Wooddale governing bodies weekly. Yesterday, the Bensonville group called BIG recommended we continue working together and would like to create a unified document and or understanding that describes how Bensonville governing bodies, which includes the police department, the village, park district, the library, will move forward during the months of June and July regarding COVID-19 preventions, food distribution, canceling and postponing events, et cetera. Nothing has been finalized, but I just wanted to inform our board that this was our idea. As it develops, I will report uh, what is being developed to the board. Tentative Board of Education meeting dates. We need to approve the board meeting dates uh, for next school year at our May board meeting. Um, if we could post that up, Jim. I would like the board to take a look at it right now and make some comments and we could explain the, the reasoning behind that. Jim, do you have that calendar? If not, the draft schedule is attached in the board packet. Okay. Jim, are you there? Okay. Jim, could you? Hey, kid, we recognize you're here. Jim, can you put on the calendar? Put up the calendar. It's after the, the board meeting calendar. Is that page four of the packet? It is, right? Yes, page four. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Can we just look at it? Uh, the, do all the board members have it in front of them? It looks like this. Yep. I do. Okay. Yeah. Just real quickly, um, any comments on it? I know Patty had sent me some, some uh, comments in regards. Why is it mostly th the third week instead of the fourth week of the month? And part of the reason, especially for November and December, for November, we put it in the third, the, the third Wednesday instead of the fourth because the following week is Thanksgiving. So that okay. makes sense, okay? December is Christmas. Okay. Uh, so we just kind of follow that pattern, but just want to give you, once again, this is our first reading. You're going to approve it next month. Is this okay with someone or would someone like to turn on it? What? What about October? October 21st, uh, instead of uh, October 27th? No, October yeah, 21st. Okay. Oh, 20th. you want to change it to the 27th? I'm just wondering why, you know, that is there, was there a conflict in the calendar? There isn't a conflict. We can make yeah. that the 28th. Right. I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, November, December, we know it's because of how... The holidays we need to have it the third week but then the remaining third weeks if 
I mean, the, the question is, do we want to change those to the fourth week so that so that, you know, wherever possible, we can have it on the fourth week so it's consistent and we know that, you know, the meeting will be the very last Wednesday of the month. I mean, does anybody have any other ideas on it? I mean, a comment on that? Yeah, well, I, I totally understand, you know, November and December. And I know James had said something about conflict with uh, concerts or something else going on at the- Yeah, it's February, February. Okay. See, the dog agrees with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. So that's absolutely uh, right. Need a doorbell. In February, we have to have it on the third week. So, correct, just to reiterate what Paul is saying, uh, are we all, do we want to move everything else to the fourth Wednesday of the month? I Why would you either consistent third or fourth? You want to do everything on the third week as opposed to I like the fourth, but I, um, but it's mostly established here on the third. So, right, I'm fine with it the way it is. All right, I mean, I, I could go either way. I mean, usually it's going to be it's the last week we do it the fourth, but since we already have three months, you know, we're February, November, and December that we're in the th that we have to have on the third. Do, you know, do we want to keep it consistent so it's always the third? Sure. Either way works for me. I okay. So what so what I will do at the um, at the board meeting in May, I'll have the options for third as as you see it here, and I'll also have a, another draft for the um, honoring the the fourth Wednesday. Would that work with, with folks? Because we don't have That'd to vote great. for the review. That'd be great. Yeah. To, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, kid, you, can you hear us, kid? I, I can. Yeah. Okay. So everyone's okay with that? Hey, Kate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's I, fine I, with I think, me. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, whatever works for everyone. Uh, just my input would be, again, I think looking at the consistency, um, the, uh, because a majority of these weeks are on the third, you've got three weeks around the fourth. It, it would pick, you know, a uh, good reason to, to just put it on the third of it, week of every, every, every month. But, uh, yeah. I'm not okay. sure how much that takes away from people, but yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. What I will do as well as on my weekly reports, I'll insert that and I'll get feedback as we do one-on-one -on -one meetings. Let's just do it that way. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Thanks, All right, James. Thanks. Uh, let, the next one is the FOIA request by Smart Local 265. Local 265 requested information regarding invoices, names, and contract information of contractors and or subcontractors that were awarded work by Fenton within the last year. So that was the request, that was a FOIA. Mary Timmons had submitted that in, so we are complete with that. We're done with that. Next item is in the other. There's two things that I would like to bring up. One of them, just a quick update, it's called the Portrait of a Graduate. As you guys know, just an update, COVID-19. Um, we worked for about a year and a half to get Portrait of a Graduate completed. Two, seven, and 100 with their boards approved it. Unfortunately, this last month, month and a half, um, the members of the Portrait of a Graduate Committee has not met because we have some other crisis uh, uh, topics and um, uh, tasks to complete. Uh, for example, remote learning, feeding our students, problem solving with <laughs> related topics, and so forth. Little things like that. We'll put it on hold. Uh, yeah. We'll probably start, I'll get a hold of the two superintendents. Uh, in regards to how do we roll this out or what will happen in the fall the portrait of a graduate so i just want to make sure everyone's on the same page we have not forgotten about that that's very very important to us uh but right now we got to take care of this crisis and our issues right now so that has been put on hold this next one is very important it came to our radars just uh the last 24 48 hours it's about our chromebook purchase um as the board will remember in support of our one-to-one -one program each summer, Fenton purchases Chromebooks for the incoming ninth graders, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's current condition caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have caused shortage in the supply chain for these types of devices and delays and lead times for the devices for all. What that basically means is people are buying them up, okay? Because they didn't purchase them before, the strict of scrambling to get uh, remote learning or e-learning going in their district. So the supply is, is, is low. Um, 
So in order uh, to that we have devices for our incoming ninth graders, Trenton needs to begin purchasing processes early. We usually do this in June and July. We would like to move it up. We're asking you guys tonight for a consensus move forward with the purchase of these devices. Once we have our purchase in the pipeline, we're getting it fine. Thank you. There was some background noises. And we have a better understanding of the timeline for the availability. We will come back to the board for your final approval in May for this purchase. At, at the uh, next board meeting, which is May. So what we're trying to say is, hey, hey, board, we need to purchase the Chromebooks now, okay? Money's there. We're moving it about two months early. So we're in the in line to purchase these Chromebooks before they run, run out. Um, <clears throat> the official vote will take place in May. Uh, the, total we plan, the total plan purchase is for 400 Chromebooks. There's about 350, 365, uh, worth of incoming, um, I'm sorry, incoming ninth graders coming in, uh, uh, matriculating next year. We're going to try to purchase 400, um, <laughs> just about $160,000. Uh, uh, we have sufficient funds in our technology budget as of today. Okay. Okay. Someone had a question there. Yeah, because supply is slow, does that mean that, uh, I mean, are the pricing reasonable? Is there? Yes, it is reasonable. Great question. It okay. went three $3. Okay. So no it used to be mm -hmm. three eighty-seven sixty-three dollars. It used to be three eighty-seven sixty-three. Oh. Now it's three hundred and ninety dollars. Okay, that's reasonable. So, once so again, utilizing um, current Chromebooks is that is not acceptable then? You know, or like? Great question, Patty. So, as you know, we purchase Chromebooks for as freshmen matriculate in. So our seniors Chromebook will be its fifth year next year. Um, those are no longer, it, it, we, we, we don't want to utilize that. We don't want to utilize that money. So we want current sure. Chromebooks for our incoming ninth graders. Good question. Okay. So that's in the plan. Um, so we will move uh, with that plan, with that purchase order to get in line and you and the board will approve the purchase of approximately $160,000 uh, at the May board meeting. Once again, we're just moving it forward. We usually purchase, uh, put in the purchase order in June, get them by July. Uh, we don't want to take a chance because I know I will be kicking myself in the head if our incoming ninth graders do not have a Chromebook. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I think that's a, a very proactive move, good move uh, to make. So okay. thank you, James. Uh, Okay. All right. We lost Juliet too. Juliet, you there? Okay. She joined back. Okay, nobody move until we go back online. I'm having some connection issues, so I'm sort of in and out of this conversation. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to we hear you? Out? Juliet, what we were saying. Uh, in regard to the Chromebook, um, we want to uh, purchase them early, at least get online to purchase them early because there's a, um, a scramble in demand. Um, and we do not want to uh, have access to the Chromebooks when the supplier um, runs out. So we want to purchase it about two months early. And, um, the, and what I told the board is basically we'll get online now. Come May, they will approve the, the, the amount of $160,000 for these Chromebooks for our incoming ninth graders. Okay. Thank you. How many How many students are coming in? How many? We are expecting 365, but we're buying 400 just in case there's five, 10 extras, plus or, plus or minus uh, uh, five, 10, 15 students um, as backup. Jim, are we back online? That seems unusually small, no? Um, the graduating class, Juliet, for this year is about 365. It, it, it's, yeah. We're, we're expecting a big one in two years from um, at least just for two. 
over 400. Wow. Yeah, my graduating class in high school was uh, 775 students. Just my graduating class. Yeah. Big. Yeah. Big. Academy. Yeah. Mine was 28. 28? Student? 28. Mm -hmm. For high school? <laughs> yeah. That's small. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. And five. Who said five? Yeah, five? One thousand. Oh, one thousand. One thousand. Yeah. Oh, five. Wow. I'm sporting my Fenton, uh, my Fenton cup. Oh yeah, I use mine every morning for coffee. Yeah. And it's only water. <laughs> yeah, we believe you. We believe you. <laughs> For some of you guys that didn't uh, didn't see this, uh, Lauren Lamb. Uh, one of our CT instructors constructed this face shield that we wear when we distribute food and very helpful like this. So uh, she made about stuff. So it's good stuff here. Oh, that's a great that's idea. That's awesome. I think Dave should wear it the rest of the meeting. Where, I don't see it. You don't see it right here. I'm Are you wearing it? You, do you have it on, Jay? Yep. Yeah, you just, there it is. Usually I put it in my band here. Sammy does it too. <laughs> So look at this. There we go. I've lost. You need visual. a mask with plastic on it. Then I put on my glasses. You look like a rock star. Yeah, there you go. Looks like. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, Bruce, Bruce, could you wear that headgear when you do the treasurer's report? Nice. Like you're <laughs> <running>? <laughs> well, that'll make it more interesting, right, Sam? <laughs> Kind of look like you're an accountant behind the scenes or something. <laughs> I like it. Me too. Yeah. I wonder what happens if um, if we just never connect again. Do we continue to board meeting? <laughs> I think we should. I think we. I think we. Uh, yeah, we have to. I think as long as Mary's there, record it. Yeah. Jim, are you recording this as we go through Google Meets? Oh, Jim's not online. I just got a text that said it's back up, so. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. Are you back up? <laughs> okay. Watching a movie in the background. I heard. I think it's X Man. All right, who's got the TV on? That's Kit. Oh, it's Kit. <laughs> Kit. <laughs> okay, unacceptable. We're live. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um. All right, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments of any items on the consent agenda? Yes, we do. I, we'll, go ahead, Patty. No, you go ahead. You can cover them. Jim. Good morning. Can you, Jim, can you videotape us through? Yes, we are, because our normal protocol is to videotape and to show it, put it on our website and to show it to our individual, uh, whether it's a day early, uh, when we were in in-person board meeting. So we're not breaking um, uh, protocol well, in many ways. Right, good. Uh, can you hold on, Patrick? Hey, I'm on the other line with somebody that's watching it. They say they can hear us still. Okay, oh. looking can hear us. Okay, even better. All right, good. Hmm. Well, he said he's he's listening to it right now, so. 
Okay. Hmm. All right, but in any case, we, we can proceed. So I think we should just proceed. Okay. Um, so, go ahead, Paul. So yeah, I mean, back to the consent agenda. Uh, any comments? Just a quick comment, uh, a board member, Patty, uh, gave me a call earlier in regards to the 2021 student code of conduct revisions. Uh, there was some inconsistency with uh, terminologies, very minor uh, terminologies. Um, if if you have your board meeting, it's on page 74, page 74, okay, at the bottom there. I'm just going to read it. It's, it's reading right now is granted to the superintendent or school authority. It should say superintendent or designated school authority. So one word is being added, designated okay. school authority. Okay, minor there. And if you read on, it says to conduct both searches and interviews. No, that's an inappropriate word. Interviews, we're using the word questions. Interviews and questioning, I'm sorry, questioning. Um, and lastly, so instead of using the word interviews, we're using the word questioning. And lastly, uh, there was some inc inconsistency we have been using school resource officer, okay? School resource officer, basically meaning uh, Officer Nelson. Uh, we utilized a, um, a inconsistent word uh, and, and used the word school liaison. liaison. Officer, school liaison police officer. Just a correction, we will continue to use school resource officer. So those are our, the, the typos and minor changes with with the student code of conduct revision. Did I have everything covered, Patty? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, on that. And then just to, to emphasize with the, as part of the consent agenda is our, uh, the treasurer's report. And, you know, we have all this group of items that are supposed to be charged out today that are not gonna be charged out because we didn't use them. The, right, the James? Yes, that the terminology that uh, is being used is a um, standing order. Standing order. What what that basically means is a standing purchase order. That really helps our business folks here to have it open. Instead, if we're using Airmark, for example, over and over, once a month, once a week, et cetera, is to keep that purchase order open. So. Um, our business folks do not have to create a new purchase order over and over. It doesn't mean we're being charged that amount over and over again. It's just basically saying, hey, look, that account, that, is a, that account is open because we have a consistent uh, 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 transaction with that, with that company. Yeah. That's it. Good questions. That's it, Paul. Okay. Thank you. Uh James, thank you, Patty. Um, then may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Second by Jackie. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Roll call, please. Peyton Howell. Yes. Galloway. Yes. I a stranger in my room. There you go. Yes. Ramirez? Yes. King Pelpong? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. Okay, um, motion has passed. Now we move on to the next discussion item, the school treasurer appointment. And Bruce, this is yours. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is uh, an annual uh, transaction that we uh, bring to the board every year. Um, it's a one-year appointment. Um, the the treasurer uh, can be a school, uh, shall be a, either a member of the board who serves a one-year term or non-board member. Historically, um, we've used the non-board member and it's been the CSBO, myself. Um, and I think even before I got here, it was uh, kind of under the same structure um so if the board wishes to continue uh, in that manner um there is a resolution for the board uh to approve and um it would be for a one-year term starting july 1st 2020. 
Okay. Line what, Bruce? You cut yourself off. It would be for a, a one-year term, Jackie, um, starting July 1st, 2020. Okay. Are you up for it? I, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm up for the challenge, yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks for asking. We want you to do it if you don't want to do it. <laughs> Bruce, does that go along with the surety bond and all that? It does. And we'll present that to you next month. Um, the first step of this, there's a couple of steps. Um, the first step is appointing a treasurer first, and then the surety approving that at uh, the next board meeting. And then once all these uh, resolutions and documentation is approved by the board, um, by, by law, we have to submit it to the uh, regional office uh, of education. So we, we follow that protocol. And we'll... When is the deadline for that, for submitting that? Uh, well, they prefer it, you know, prior to July 1st. So um, the board will have everything approved. We uh, anticipate it by May. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Then may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the resolution appointing school treasurer as presented so moved. Uh, thank you, thank you patty and i think jackie no it was marianne marianne i'm sorry okay it's patty okay. and marianne thank you uh roll call please peyton hell yes rego yes ramirez yes Paul pong yes jalwick Yes. And we miss. Yes. All right, that motion has passed. Um, the next item is the 2020-2021 NEDSEC classroom lease. And uh, Bruce, if you could enlighten us. Sure, sure. Um, the board, this may look familiar. This is a, a classroom lease that NEDSEC uh, leases from us. Um, it's a one-year lease. It does. Um, it's a, a special education classroom um, that serves Fenton students. Um, they do pay us rent for the use of the classroom, uh, fifteen thousand uh, dollars each year. They present a certificate of insurance, um, and their the lease would commence in August of 2020 and, and conclude in uh, August of 2021. So um, the steps regarding this. The NETSEC board um, approves it uh, first, and then it comes to our board to our board to act on it. Um, I think we you know, have a comfort level that they are serving our students. Uh, we're pleased with having this classroom in our building. Um, the teacher's great. It's a NETSEC uh, staff member who is the, the teacher in the classroom. And uh, I would say the building's overall very pleased with, with uh, how it's run. And uh, we would just uh, recommend entering into this lease agreement for another year. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Any questions? Mm. No. Okay. Nope. All right, great. And may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the NEDSEC lease agreement as attached? So moved. I'll Mary. second. Jackie. Uh, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, roll call, please. Peyton Howell? Yes. Rago? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Team Paul Pong? Yes. Jalwick? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. Okay, we move on to the um, DuPage Area Occupational Education System uh, appointment. And this is uh, James. This is uh, basically TCD board. Um, uh, as you know, we are a uh, participating high school for TCD. We have about approximately uh, 50 uh, students attending TCD before COVID-19. Um, I am a board member and um, recommending that I continue to serve on the board so we can represent our student in our district uh, with um, uh, with the remaining 11 uh, high school districts as well. So it's, it's, it's basically to have a voice um, um, for Fenton uh, at that school district. Do we have a substitute for you, James, in case you can't attend a particular board meeting? 
Yes, that Sir, you're compliant with the property tax extension limitation law, so you're within the tax cap um, to bring it down to um, what we're allowed to increase it over by. And that's the CPI, is, as everybody kind of knows, plus new property. So it, it had to be reduced. That reduction factor that's noted in there is at 96.4%. Um, we just applied it consistently. They apply it, actually, we agreed with their the way they applied it because it was consistent with how we budgeted uh, for those funds. Um, and that was planned for in the 1920 budget. So 
Um, we budgeted for the redu re anticipated reduced levy uh, of what we were projecting that we would get. So um, just a couple of highlights I wanted to run through. Um, as I said, the first bullet there under the major highlights, the 2.2% uh, percent higher than 2018. Um, the tax extension is within 1% of what we projected. So as I said, we, we, uh, we were right on target there with our budget and what we were anticipating to get with this levy extension. Um, so the CPI was 1.9%. And then that difference between the 2.2 and the 1.9 is the value of the new property. Um, new property was uh, came in at $4,043,210. And that generated a little bit over $80,000, $80,676. Uh, <coughs> and that's up over the, the previous year of 53,000. Um, so that's, that's good news. Um, on the next page, the uh, property value or EAV is what it's often referred to. Um, that grew by 3.4%. So our total EAV for Fenton is that $1,289,903.68. So uh, that's a, that's a $1.2 billion number. So um, that's what that looks like. Uh, the new property, um, you know, is that $4 million number, um, and it's classified across our, our uh, property value. Uh, probably no surprise, but residential is about 11%, and the rest of it is made up between commercial and industrial. So um, the bulk of our property is, is, is residential, or um, I'm sorry, commercial, okay. industrial. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the tax rate uh, is slightly less, a uh, decrease of that 0.0236. And what happens is when the EAV increases, uh, that generates a lower tax rate. Um, so that, it'll be a lower tax rate when you see your tax bills in, in, uh, in, in May, June. So uh, those are kind of the highlights of the tentative tax levy um, for 2019. So no action, it's just information um, for you to... Um, digest a little bit. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure. The houses that are uh, north of Foster and west of 83 that are being torn down, are we going to see a substantial decrease in tax monies because of that? Uh, we wouldn't with this levy. We'll, we'll, uh, I, I'm not sure what their, um, uh, how that property is assessed, if that's um, I presume it's still going to be taxable property. I haven't seen anything. It may, you know, if it is going to be uh, a tax exempt, they would they have to notify us of that. Um, I'm not aware of that, but the the value of, of those properties would not be impacted with this levy that we're seeing right now. Okay, good. But typically, you know, what happens if we lose property? Um, what what happens is the pot becomes smaller. So. Um, you know, the extension is still going to be the extension. It just spread over, you know, fewer taxpayers, in essence, what happened. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how the process works. Okay. And Bruce, do you have a breakdown between commercial uh, tax revenue versus uh, residential? A breakdown of how much we're generating from the, um, I don't, I can get that uh, percentage wise. Um, I don't have the, the actual, I think, it, I believe it does say it on the extension report, uh, Kev, but uh, I just broke it down by the percentages um, right now, but I can, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it shows it on the extension report. Yeah, that, that'd be interesting to see. Yeah, sure. Well, you did say that 11% was residential, so would that mean that the other 89% is commercial? Yeah, it's it's pretty well evenly split. Commercial is forty six percent, and the yeah. industrial is forty three percent. I guess the good news I could say is is the industrial piece. Those industrial parks, the Prologis and um, other parks like that, are are doing actually quite well in this yeah. uh, grim economy. So that's that's good news um, because we have those properties in in both uh, communities, Wooddale mm -hmm. and Bensonville. So that's one of the more positives <laughs> yeah. that those, yeah. those properties are doing quite well you know the distribution centers and things like that so that's kind of a, a, a positive for for fenton for sure right okay all right good so so i think we can we rely on the 11 percent residential and, and then the 89 percent uh as commercial and that's real that's, yes yeah that's pretty valid okay thank you sure um bruce that percentage you, you just mentioned with the 
11 percent uh, residential. Now that was that was just for new property, correct? That's not for existing property, correct? Yeah, and, and um, but it, it would be pretty. Uh, I don't have the form in front of me, but I can get the um, breakdown of the classifications for for all property. But that would be the the new property of how it came on the rolls. Yes. All right, and then Bruce, one last thing: the adding to, to Jackie's question before regarding the new development, you know, regarding the uh, residential revenue that was lost for the for the new industrial area, wouldn't the new property owner be responsible automatically automatically that the same year for tax revenue for that property? They, they would, yeah. If it if it still stays on the rolls, that's a good a point of clarification, Paul. If if it still stays on the rolls, and it just a but it sounded like they were going to be torn down. I think so. I'm not well, sure. They are, what torn down, yeah. are they okay? And I'm not sure what the intentions are of of that property. That's going to be if there's something new is going to be built on there. If it's going to be obviously, you know, if it's going to be a parking lot, you know, it's not going to generate as much tax revenue as a as a you know a thriving business or a, a new residence or something like that. But um, it all depends what that what is replacing yeah. that property that tore down. Okay, all right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Bruce. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, then we move on, Bruce, to the next item: the uh, health insurance renewal. Yeah. This again, an information item. Um, this is our. Uh, annual renewal that occurs in March, as you, uh, I think, remember, we're part of EBC, the Educational Benefit Cooperative. It's about over 100 districts, about 118 school districts participate in this co-op, uh, public school districts, primarily throughout n Northern Illinois. Um, and all of our uh, insurance programs with regard to uh, health, uh, dental, life, um, are all through um, this uh, program and, and this cooperative. Each program can be customized, so uh, you know we're not going to have the same program as as another you know member district. Um, it can be whatever we so choose. The carrier is all the same. So in in our case, in, well in the co-op's case, the carrier is is uh, Blue Cross the provider, um, but each plan is is customized to whatever you uh, so choose it to be within your your your, your local entity. So just to clarify that, um, so. These are our renewal rates. Um, the plans will offer next year, and this is all starting July 1st, 2020. That's when our, our plan year starts. Um, we will have one PPO. Currently we have two. Uh, we're phasing out the other more expensive PPO plan. So we have one PPO plan going forward. Um, we'll still continue to offer two HMO plans. We've got a dental plan, and then we have uh, life insurance as well. Um, the approvals or the renewal was approved by the cooperative back in, on March 19th. Um, and the final renewal summary across the cooperative. So these are the averages across the co-op um, for the um, each respective plan. So the PPO is uh, an increase of 5.7%. The HMO is an increase of 43 and the dental is an uh, increase of the 1.3%, and the life uh, rates are going to remain unchanged. Um, your they, they, what they use is kind of a banding formula, and it's all based on your loss ratio or your paid claims that are occurring within your. Mm. You know, um, and once they determine those loss ratios, um, they create this banded formula. These these ranges. Um, of where you fall and, and where the membership uh, districts fall. So in our case with the PPO medical, our increase is, is at that 4.7% on the, on the next page. Um, our loss ratio is 91%. The average increase was 5.7%. Um, um, and we kind of are, they, they tell us, uh, or they show, illustrate to us in the, in the various charts that they provide to us of where each member district fell in which band. And we happen to fall right in the middle, uh, as did 28 other school districts out of the, you know, the 100 plus. But the majority of them fell in that 4.7% uh, increase uh, for the PPO. 
and the paid cost uh, claim ratio was uh, ranged from 80 and a half percent to 94.9. And as I said, we were just over uh, 91% for the PPO. The, the uh, HMO's plans are 5.3% increase. Um, the average was 4.7 or 4.3. Um, we were a little bit over our paid loss claim ratio. The range was 98% to 104 for this particular band. We fell at a little bit over 101%, uh, as did 20 other, 23 other school districts. So we're at a 5.3% a increase for the HMO. And then um, the uh, dental finally is a 1.3% increase. The majority of the districts, 56 of them, fell within that band um, for an increase for next year. And, and again, these are all for um, starting uh, July 1st. Um, so what happens, our next steps that after, uh, you know, we learn of the pr approvals, we bring the information to the board to review um, and to make aware of it. Um, we uh, then update our rates for the staff. We do have an open enrollment. Uh, typically, we've had um, representatives from EBC and Blue Cross Blue Shield come on site to um, do on-site open enrollment sessions. Um, during our lunch periods. Obviously, this year we're not going to be able to do that. So everything will be done electronically this year um, and shared with our staff. So our open enrollment period uh, will run May 4th through May 22nd for this year. And uh, so that's kind of what our uh, health insurance renewal um, is looking like for next year. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Does anyone have any questions regarding nope. the health insurance information? Mm -mm. No, I think that was pretty nope. uh, comprehensive. Sorry if that was thank too much, <laughs> but uh, thanks no, for listening. No, it was great. No, thank good. you. It was good. Yeah. No, very good. All right, thank you, Bruce. Um, all right, now we move on to the committee reports. Um, Paul, yeah. Paul, this just real quickly, um, we forgot to go over the student and parent survey. Could we interject here now before we go into the committee reports? Um, yeah, now would be a good time, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, go, go on, James. Yes. We're gonna start off with the student survey in regards to remote learning. I will go through this very uh, quickly. Uh, I think it's important. Part of the purpose of the survey is to get feedback from our students, how is it going, What what kind of things can we, what's going well, what's not going well. So let's just go through this real quickly. So it's a student uh, survey in regards to remote learning. Next slide. So uh, 568 student responded pretty proportional in wow. regards to level. Wow. Next slide. How many hours of the day are you engaged in e-learning for your class? Include actual time on the computer and any additional time you spend preparing or completing your work. As you could see, if you look at the 40% uh, 40%, uh, 40 is 40.5% uh, is the majority, which is anywhere between 2.4 hours. But a vast majority goes uh, with the color red and goldish here from one to four hours. Okay. Hmm. When are you typically completing your work, e-learning work? This was, I thought it was gonna be at nighttime, but it looks like if you look at the, the green and um, the red, it's sometimes anytime between eight and 3.15, which is the normal um, time that kids are in school, which which is rewarding, I think is good news because there's it seems to be a routine at home. Yeah, that's good. Yes, next slide. Do you have any uh, uh, other obligation during regular school hours? For example, a job, you take care of your siblings. Um, uh, uh, the majority is no. Um, I, ha I do not have any obligation between 8 and 3.15. Barely no. Yeah, but barely no is right. It's, it's pretty close to a 50 split. Yes, yeah. it is. Wow. Okay. Next question is, have your teachers responded to any question or concerns you have expressed in a timely manner? Uh, overwhelmingly majority of my teachers have answered my question in a timely manner. Mm. And I think part of the reason why there's a, um, I have not uh, asked any question because the, the instruction we would like to say is so clear, the clarification is not needed. Um, next slide. 
six says, oh, next one. Uh, what are the best parts of e-learning? What are the best parts of e-learning? If you look at the last response, I won't say that, uh, but th there's some good stuff here. I'll just read a couple. I enjoy it. <laughs> I decide. When, oh, when nice. In school, you don't have to you get the freedom. I enjoy okay. spending time with family and my, uh, spending time with my family. I enjoy the freedom and how I don't have to wake up very early for school. I can simply decide on my own time when I want to do my schoolwork, which also helps me with time management. So those are some feedback from the students. Next slide. Not bad. What are the most challenging parts of e-learning? Um, and you could read there uh, the amount of work, uh, the isolation. I miss seeing my friends. That's just the vast majority being motivated. Uh, staying motivated, my household is tense, and both my parents are healthcare workers, and my dad is taking care of a corona patient. Staying motivated is hard in a tense house. Yeah. So, see, as you know, um, each individual, each family is different uh, in regards to what they're going through this time of crisis. I think that's why we, we encourage everyone, all the staff here, to be flexible and to be compassionate. Next slide. What more could Fenton do uh, be doing? Be more open about everything. I think a lot of the teachers are trying to stay in touch, but it's hard staying at home all the time. I feel like we are being overworked. There's just way, way wor more work for e-learning than it would be in actual school. I think Fenton is already doing all they can to make this as smooth as, as possible. Thank you. So a lot of positive um, and um, important uh, feedback from our students there. I think it's very, they're, they're being very honest. James, quick question. Yes. Is there any validity to the fact that they feel there's more work? Is there really more work than normal or no? I think yes and no. I can answer it for my kids. My kids at home are all in e-learning, all five of them, and it's okay. more work. More, um, and plus, it's a new platform. Right. I think you to be to to be responsive. Hey, look, I got a question on this foil method. What is it? You know, and so forth, or or the double <laughs> or, or uh, um, some biological question, things like that. So it might seem, um, and it probably is more work for our students. It's definitely a different mode of learning. Correct. Okay. Thanks. I've talked to a couple of parents and actually students in our neighborhood. I have freshmen to seniors, and um, I've heard a couple of times that they feel like it's a lot of busy work. Like they're answering the same prompts day after day in a blog. Okay. Did you hear that, James? I didn't. I have not heard that. Um, I spoke no. to a parent the other day. They love e-learning. They see their kids um, both. One of the students, especially as um, an IEP, um, thriving with that, uh, the the e-learning remote learning format. Uh, wow. There are staff very responsive. Um, would ask to ask a question, something like this. I, I'm getting a B now. What do I need to do to get an A? And uh, our teacher would say, you got to do A, B, C, and D during this time. They do it. Um, uh, they get uh, uh, the grade or the reward that, that they're looking for or or, or um, the feedback they want. So um, I would say the majority of the time we're hearing positive things in regards to to what we're faced with right now with remote learning under the circumstances. Good. I, I would say that Michael would just say that there's so much reading because you have to read the instructions and you have to do the work and there's just like a lot of of that but i mean what can you do i mean this is just the unprecedented time you know so but i think it, i think yeah. people, under the circumstances everything is going well you know and i do like that they can email their teacher and say what can i do to improve my grade and they will email them back and say do x y and z and they can yeah. they can work at that you know which is very nice you know, it gives them a goal. Right. Um, you know, just, just looking at it from a pragmatic standpoint, um, you know, e-learning was meant for school uh, snow days, right? That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not, it wasn't meant as a platform to, uh, to have sustained uh, learning experience like this. And I, I think 
what it, it does open up to is um, the idea that there's there's more to this uh, as it evolves, and you know whoever's out there as an entrepreneur or even running this e-learning platform is probably going to look at future developments on that and expansion. But yeah, um, you know, as far as my kids, just the feedback is um, it, you know, it, it. What's interesting about it is that if you go back to how we learned, right back, in my, my 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 decade would be the '80s and so on and so on. I mean, it was about classroom and. Now that the kids are growing up with the internet and you know all this media, it, it seems like um, it might be the, the the more appropriate way for the kids to learn. I mean, there's definitely going to be a need to have classroom, but uh, it's just interesting to think, you know, how how this is going to play out after all this happens. That's a very good point. Um, just to chime in, and and I'll go on to the presentation. Um, as you guys heard uh, in the news. Um, uh, we have to be prepared for the fall. Uh, we are meeting with our administrators and our staff on a weekly, daily basis and how to improve remote learning. Um, that's why we're being proactive with the Chromebook purchase, the Wi-Fi, broadband issues, broadband issues. So it will evolve. Um, like anything else, through a crisis, something, some good will come out of it, and we got to make sure we cultivate and we evolve uh, to make sure our students are learning. This last slide says, who do you want to thank? I'm just going to read the last one. To be honest, I would like to thank the whole school, the whole school, <laughs> for all of the support and engagement to us during these hard times. Really appreciate it. I think that's- Very something. nice. Yes. That's pretty yeah. profound. Yeah, I like it. Very good. Next slide. Now we transition to the parent survey. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay, here we go. So not bad, could be better. Uh, something that we can improve on, 111 responses in English, 29 responses in Spanish. Has your child been able to access all the material necessary for remote learning? Overwhelmingly, 95% said yes. Okay. Sweet. So very good. Yeah. Uh, that's a technology question, as you know, and uh, 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 movement of information. If your child has not been able to access the materials, please describe the, the problems. So here's what we got. Um, uh, yes, no problem, no problem. So not applicable. PDF copies, no printer. Uh, this uh, and having uh, issues submitting work back to the teachers. So we respond back and try to make sure to, uh, make sure that's resolved. Internet connection um, is is your uh, general response there. Can't do anything about that. Next question: How many hours of days in your child's engage engage in remote learning for his her classes? Include actual time on the computer and any additional time they spend preparing or completing the work. Um, so kind of like the students, um, it ranges between uh, the, the majority, majority is between two to four hours. Um, if you take the 50 percent of it, approximately is anywhere between one to, to four hours. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I think that there's similarities with the students. In your opinion, is your child overwhelmed with the amount of work he, she has been receiving? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Does no. Wow. I think they want to keep them busy. Um, they, <laughs> and so forth. Needs at least twice as much work. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> when is your child completing the remote learning? Uh, it's the red is uh, consistent with the students. About the regular time, eight to three fifteen, which is shows mm -hmm. another again to me at least that there's a routine at home. Mm -hmm. Number seven. Does your child have any other obligation during regular work hours? As you can see, there's a huge difference between parents and students. It went fifty fifty with the students, eighty six percent. Parents said no. Wow. Said no. Yeah, no way. <laughs> of course, you know who's probably answering this. Is the parents who are at home and are engaged versus, and, and so that they're seeing that their student doesn't have other things, other responsibilities. Whereas the other 400 parents who did not answer are working and could not, or did not answer the question. So there, that discrepancy could be accurate. Okay. Because they're, the other students are home working. Okay. Or babysitting, or whatever. Yeah. No, the, the, have you received communication from your child's teacher? Uh, 50, 50 
would be there. Um, as we know, if you want to get a hold of the teacher, all you have to do is uh, email. Um, so um, if, if there's a need to communicate with teachers, um, parents should be proactive to uh, reach out to their teachers. Next slide. You know, on, on that last slide, it depends on the op the definition of the parents' obligations versus the kids, too. I mean, what's an obligation, right? Correct. Do you have to take out the garbage? <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, binging. <Yeah. laughs> Remember that. If your really? student receives accommodation, is he, she using them? 46%, uh, I would say, not applicable is the majority. 24% uh, is saying no. Number 10, have you utilized any of the resources on the school websites to help your child? Uh, wow. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Next slide. Uh, what has been the most challenging part of remote learning for you as a parent? 92 responses, nothing, none. Not knowing what they really are doing or if they even accomplish it. None, not challenging, uh, not knowing what has been assigned and so forth. Next question, are there any additional challenges you are experiencing we should know about in order to help you help your child? If so, uh, would, would you like us to reach out to you? So uh, they said no thank you. And there are some folks that left their numbers or emails. We immediately, there was about seven of them. Um, as an admin team, we split it up with with uh, Jim Batts and myself, Sam, uh, Eileen, Pedro, uh, and so forth. So immediately, most of the response uh, questions were, hey, look, I need a new Chromebook. Battery charger isn't working. Um, uh, this hotspot isn't working. So we were immediately, um, uh, immediately responded and gave them the tools they need to be successful. And anyway, nothing huge there. I like that. I wish he was given more work. <laughs> Is that you, Daddy? No. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to share? The last one there, she doesn't want to do anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So there's the responses. So I think um, what we're trying to show here, it's important for us as we move forward, as remote learning, the, the reality of remote learning, continuing the possibility in the fall semester we need these responses good bad or ugly uh, they're very honest very raw as you saw it uh, i think we uh we won't embrace that and we're going to continue to have the surveys and feedback from our parents and students and how to be more successful and to improve on remote learning i think this is just um uh critical uh moving forward so we'll continue that effort okay i'm done with that okay Thank you, James, for that. Um, now we'll move on to the committee reports. Uh, the first one is the Bensonville, Bensonville Community, Community Foundation, Juliet and Kid. I don't know if they've met virtually or not. We have not. We have not. Uh, I've been in, in, in touch a little bit with Tom, our president, in uh, trying to get together. So we'll see. That's all we have. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then the Finance Facil Facilities Committee. What is the next one? Uh, Marianne, I don't know if you have any comments or. I do not at this time. Thank you. All right. Well, the only thing is on the facilities initiative, obviously, that's on hold now. As we all know, you know, there's just no path forward to uh, proceed. With that, and that's just, uh, it's not canceled, it's just postponed. And we will just have to see, you know, we'll have to work with STR and to see when they're ready to, um, you know, when we can uh, take it up where we left off. And uh, I mean, that, that's all we can do with that. It's just not feasible to, you know, as we can all see, it's just not feasible to proceed with that in, uh, at this time. Correct. I, Paul, can I add something to that? Totally uh, agree with what's stated there. Uh, Bruce and I would 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 probably hold a meeting uh, with the board uh, virtually in June or July in regards to some of the purchases we need for the fall semester. It would not really ne mean, uh, necessarily facilities, 
more furniture related purchases that we need board approval. Um, the facility audit, we know that's on hold. We know what needs to be fixed. This, this is outside of that, uh, that we need board approval and board consensus. It's really unfortunate that it's on hold at this time because it'd be a great time to be doing things. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, just like many things going on right now that's being canceled or postponed, yeah. Yeah, it is very good point, Patty. It's very unfortunate all the way around. But um, there's we'll other priorities. You can. I'm sorry? There's other priorities. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Now, right. if something should happen, James, sorry, Paul, if something should happen to where something happens with the building and we have to do something, you, of course, will say something, correct? Is he there? Say it again, Marianne. If something should happen with the building at this point in time that needs addressing, <clears throat> we'll have to do that, even if though we have everything else on hold. Absolutely. If the roof, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a lightning there's a big off. leak or something absolutely okay good good question yeah good point Marianne. okay um the next item isp delegate the only thing is is the dupage division of iasp had a meeting on april 3rd which i attended virtually um this was basically other school boards in uh, DuPage, uh, both in the metro area and rural. Um, you were dealing with the uh, issues of the uh, pan uh, pandemic as it related to their school district. Um, a lot of school districts were um, struggling with technology, Chromebooks, with e-learning, setting up their e-learning and so forth. So in this time that we had already uh, launched e-learning uh, at this time there were others not all but quite a few school districts who just didn't have the Chromebooks in the students hand or they only had one Chromebook per household rather than a Chromebook per student um, and then there was also technology the hookups and so forth so there were a lot of quite a few that were struggling um, there was also a lot of mention from other school districts dealing with anxiety, stress, anger issues. Uh, they were look, they were reaching out, looking for assistance. Um, uh, apparently, some of them were adequately were not adequately staffed with um, uh, social workers and so forth. And you know, they were looking uh, for assistance. There's also some school districts that were dealing with petitions from parents um, that were angry as far as what, what the school district was doing, that there was no communication from the superintendent to, uh, to the parents or the student. Um, there were also a couple board members that said that the superintendent was overwhelmed and that they were not getting any communication from the uh, superintendent. So, I mean, basically, I don't want to say it's all doom and gloom. That that was just, you know, there were other school districts that were also doing well. Um, but what was missing was the those school districts that were str struggling were not be were not able to. Uh, uh, focus on the food safety, health, the continued education, and the communication, which uh, which was going on at Fenton. Um, really quick, the, did they did they also disclose oh, sorry, how they were? Uh, Paul. Yes. Did they also disclose how they were remedying these situations? I mean, well, it's one thing to say this is happening, but did they? offer how they were overcoming these challenges? If well, they were. Yeah, part if of it were. was they were looking for the technology. They were looking for the Chromebooks. They were looking for supplies of Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. um, and by the second meeting, which was the April 17th meeting, which I also attended, a lot of that seemed to have been resolved. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. Um, April. Okay. Right. But there was also, um, on the second meeting, 
the issues from the other school board members that I had heard at that was more now concern of financial issues regarding um, the next fiscal year, the $2.7 billion shortfall budget for June 30th. There was concern about passing a budget this year, um, reducing the bond amount, shortfall in sales tax and re real estate tax revenue. You know, those were some of the, those were more of the concerns on the April 17th meeting that the other board that it seemed like the majority they were voicing that concern um they were also throwing ideas of reducing the pay for bus drivers food service personnel and other uh personnel um other staff members uh of their school districts um so those were the concerns on, on the second meeting um and i'll let you know then once there's a third meeting but it's it, it but I, I just wanted to reiterate that um fortunately we haven't had those issues at least not to a large extent and that we have been able to uh focus on the top three priorities of the food safety health uh education and the communication that all you know that uh um you know that we have been able to proceed with that without being uh uh struggling you know with the, with these other issues um and so uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry uh it's going, it's going back to uh you know the the emotional and and uh uh the emotional impact on this with the kids um just i'm just curious so how are the schools and and us included if james wants to chime in um delivering this uh you know the counseling or the you know are we doing virtual um yes yes we are the virtual phone calls um teachers would report hey look james on tango is struggling he's not coming uh, coming to our classes he's not checking in um, as you know, we run an attendance report every Friday. Uh, the deans, uh, both Jason and Pedro, take a look at it. Uh, uh, things are logged in by teachers so that they could review the notes and saying James on is not showing up, hasn't check, checked in in three or four days. Dean calls, hey, look, what's going on? What do you need? And so forth. Uh, I think part of it, too, as well, Kit and, and board, is that I think it's we made it very clear. SEL is critical. This is a crisis, okay? Yeah. Uh, like what I stated in my report, it's 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 basically uh, Maslow Maslow over Bloom. You know, the heart and the feelings and and physical first, and academics will come because if you're if if, if lives aren't if if lives aren't secure, no learning. So let's make sure this is secure. So therefore, there's learning. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been our focus, um, not just at the board, but as well as all staff, all district. Has there has there been uh, 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 the same level of need, or have you seen the need rise a little bit based on the situation? Real good question, Giovanni. You, you want to have any input on that one? Uh, sure. So um, I think with our focus of SEL, um, you know, plus the act of God by the governor and some of the other guidelines from the state, I think some of it has been um, students checking out and not being in there. But um, I, I think we are we are meeting a lot of needs. I don't know that it's any more or any less. Obviously, with the COVID-19 situation, um, you know, when members get sick and family members get sick, things like that, we have to respond accordingly. Um, but I don't, we haven't seen anything. One of the things that we have, and we are starting uh, actually next week, Pedro brought it to our attention, is our um, um, our Latino population. And they're struggling because of the internet I issues. And so uh, we're creating uh, resources for them. We're going to put it into our uh, into our foods. And we're working with a, um, a community liaison to try and make sure that um, we get them resources so that they can make phone calls and they can take care of things on that. So we don't have a number for it because I think it's tougher to do, but we are we do definitely have seen um, more kids just kind of being lonely and wanting to, to reach out. Uh, but the actual idea of um, 
maybe different social emotional mental issues we haven't seen that to the same extent but our social workers are reaching out and our psychologists are reaching out our special education teachers on their case so they're constantly reaching out um and one of the big things that i think um we've talked about is every there's every week there's a post about something that's social emotional for our students uh, so that we can take care of it and the other thing that we've really tried to focus on too that we we're not necessarily obligated but we are trying for is the um to reach out to parents too we know this is a struggling time for them as well so we're looking for different resources to assist them as well you know i that's awesome that those things are being identified and you're providing those um interventions um one thing i i, I don't know if you guys heard about like what happened at the air force academy the air force academy sent their freshmen sophomore and juniors home and they kept the seniors at the academy and kept them um, uh, to, to like push them through to get them to be able to graduate on time. Um, and, but they were all secluded. They all had their own rooms. They couldn't work out together. They were, they, the classes were online. It was, they were very, they, they were not allowed to interact. Um, they had two suicides within three days of each other, two suicides within three days of each other. And it just kind of like, boom, set the academy in motion that we need to do more. We need to do other than just, you know, everybody has, was, was, had a buddy and they were talking to each other, but they needed to do more. And so they, they got them out. They got them interacting face-to-face -face within social distancing. And, you know, is there, is there something we could do, something like that, to provide them a way to face-to-face -face, some kind of face-to-face -face contact other than just you know through the computer because it's it's not the same we all know that it's not the same so before it looks like james wants to wants to jump in um i i, I, I think i mean I'll, I'll i'll jump in as well there are there's groups that are doing like friday night you know the 8 20 at 8 20 on a friday night they're doing the lights and then they're holding them out for 20 minutes and 20 seconds um we we're not doing that because there's a stay at home order. <laughs> so, I mean, the governor is, has, and we're trying to make sure that we maintain that. And um, so the, you know, we've looked at different options, having them come through the drive, you know, the, the bus lane for certain things. We just think at this point, we go back to that safety issue for our students and for our staff. We, we're trying to keep a skeleton crew and, um, and, and not, you know, um, and not have put them at jeopardy. So um, that's one of the decisions. I don't know if we saw them. They did that eight, you know, at eight twenty on a Friday. The twenty minutes, twenty seconds. There was a school up north. The students did a parade. They went by, by the the lights, and then they congregated in the in the parking lot. So so it's uh, we're we're not we're trying to avoid every opportunity where we want to congregate and, and where we can try to spread it. So yes, we we know that that contact's extremely important. Um, that's why we're trying to do Zoom meetings and Google Meets and all these other things to try and get some of these interactions. We know it's not the same and we're really sad about it, um, but we're also trying to follow the, the, the doctors and the scientists and, and listen to the governor on that. So I know, James, you were going to jump in too. So Absolutely. I think we got to uh, be consistent, not just, just for Fenton, because if, if let's say we do something, something similar or not follow uh, the directive from the, the governor and the elementary school students see it and the middle school say, say hey look Fenton's is doing it um why can't we do it i think there, it, it would be more cases I know the, the 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 reason for doing it is just and and honorable uh, but we're not in that situation we held consistent uh in regards to violence directives social distancing staying at home washing your hands wearing a mask um, um and that's the directions we want to continue until it's lifted well, I have to uh, say that I, I logged in to see Mr. Escobedo's Kaleidoscope um, Poetry Slam or whatever. I don't remember exactly what it was called. But I have to say, I think even doing things like that, with what the teachers are doing, I didn't stay on for the entirety of the slam. But I have to say that I think that it did help those students. In fact, I... I don't. I didn't know any of the students that were reading, but I did notice that I think it it, it helped, especially one particular student. I could see that that student seemed lonely, and I think it helped him or her 
to, I don't want to like point any particular student out. I think it helped that student uh, in a really noticeable way to be on that uh, Zoom call. I so I think if the teachers continue to do things like that, it will make, um, it makes all the difference. So I think that was a really great thing that, that Mr. Escobedo did. Certainly. Yeah, that that is doing things like that and the and not necessarily just the Zoom meetings that they have for, for classroom time, but doing things like that outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. I think it is very encouraging and you know, any anything to help to draw the students in, I think is very important. Yeah, it was it was really touching, I thought. I, I felt like it really helped those students a lot. Cool. Yeah, I think that was awesome. I was on there too. I streamed it, it was great. Um I've had several opportunities, so I did a, a uh, principal's advisory with students. I only had a handful that jumped on. I had the seniors on today as well, um, you know, just trying to talk to them. We did a senior survey of, about prom, prom and graduation. So we have been trying to interact in different ways. Uh, I had a um, I had an interview with uh, via Zoom today with one of the signal editors. Um, I think you guys might know the kid. Um, I think it's Tim Long, I think is how you say her last name. So, I know that name. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we're trying different things and we're trying to interact with students in different ways. So, um, we agree with you, Patty. We're just we're we're just trying to make sure that they're healthy is kind of the the big deal here. So, so Johan, I I have I saw your I think it was on on um, the Fenton on the Fenton website about the seniors uh, coming on to talk to you. Yeah. I, some sort of a, I don't know if it was some sort of weird cabin brain freeze, but I saw that the seniors could come and talk to you. And I was like, well, how are the seniors going to know they could talk to him? Like, how are they? Thinking that? I was thinking elderly seniors. And I'm like, why would they want to talk to Yovan? Anyways, it took me a couple minutes to figure out that it was the senior high school. <laughs> I like, I like I'm very, I'm very kind to our our older population, our more experienced population, Juliet. I'm not mean to them. Come on now. I was you know. like, well, why yeah, would hello. you know, like, are getting the word out to the seniors yeah. to get a hold of you? <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the Bridgeway is doing a Zoom meeting with uh, with me. So uh, oh my God, it's hilarious. I think <laughs> I am seriously getting some cabin fever that I cannot. <laughs> but it's stir crazy. Yeah, exactly. I can't even believe I'm admitting this to everybody, but I was having a moment. I recorded, by the way. It's now recorded. <laughs> yeah, it is recorded. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, right. so, so, you know, we have a we have a chance to to get creative with stuff. Um, what what do you hey, hey James? What about the um, what about Zoom and coffee with superintendent? We had that uh, uh, two Saturdays ago. We had fourteen. Yeah, it, we had about fourteen students. It was funny. Yovan and I were on there. Jim Batson uh, facilitated the, uh, the 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 Zoom meeting. Um, I thought it went well. Great questions, mostly prom and graduation, um, but um, that was more towards parents. Um, we didn't get any uh, too many students there, but uh, I thought it went well. We also had a, I mean, we had a virtual staff meeting where we had 133 staff members jump on. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, we're not, we're not losing our, our staff either. We want to make sure. And um, Michelle, you know, who's on here um, and then our division leaders have done a great job. They stay in contact pretty much. I think um, Michelle and I today, we you know, we started at about eight in the morning with Zooms and now we're going to end whatever time you guys are, are done here. We had kaleidoscope in there we had committee meetings and webinars and so there's a lot of things that we're trying to make sure but it are i definitely are you know we're trying we're not forgetting about our staff too because there are staff members that either live alone or you know so we're trying to make sure that we interact with them as well so it's not you know it is about the students it's always about the students but you know where the rubber meets the road is where those staff interact with so we want to make sure that they're well taken care of also yeah. Very good. Let's. I, I, I'm going to take that cue and let's say let's move on to Ned Second Policy Committee. Good job, Yovan. Okay. All right. Thanks, Yovan. You know what? Um, actually, I just wanted to say one last thing. You know, the, the underlying 
uh, take that I had from these two meetings is that, um, not to belabor it, but that the fact that, you know, because we had e-learning in, in place already, that we were able to engage and on day one, like you said, the, the rubber hits the road on day one and have, you know, the uh, be able to tackle the attendance and participation, grading, assignments, assessments, teacher availability, IEP, and social emotional support right from day one as other districts were, were struggling on even how to uh, start their e-learning. So I just want to say a big kudos out to the, you know, administration and the staff and uh, being able to really hit the, the ground running with this. So, um, all right, let's lend. Nothing, Nothing to report. Nothing. I'm sorry. Go on. Nothing to report, Paul. Okay. Um, Ned set. Nothing there. Nothing there, Patty. Unless you have something. <clears throat> I, I don't, you know, just I, you're reviewing the, uh, the uh, minutes, um, you know, just the, the, you know, working with the billing processes and everything that's going on right now. I think that's the, that, that seemed to be like the topic of, of the day. I wasn't at the meeting, so. Okay. All right, thank you, Patty. And then the policy committee, policy committee, uh, Patty or Kit? There's nothing right now, but it looks like we're going to move up the policy meeting to May. Is that That's right, correct. James? That is correct, right. Patty and, 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 and Kit. Um, you guys have the 25 policies uh, to review. Yeah. Uh, come um, the May board meeting, Sam uh, will facilitate, facilitate the T chart to go over each of the policy. If you could just have a look at it, we'll review it all together uh, and get through it uh, in the month of May. Okay. You, you know what? Why? When do the policy changes come out from the legislature? Just it's, usually, it's usually twice a year. Usually we get a batch um, in the fall and a batch in the spring. And as you could see, Patty, it's it's revisions, it's an edit, it's a, uh, a case study. Uh, the policy itself, it's rare to have a brand new policy. I think this last five years, I've seen three new ones. Um, it's just edits and revisions. And what would you say, Mary? Um, and Sam, you jump in there. It's references, references footnote and footnote changes. Mm -hmm. And that's what the majority you will see again mm -hmm. at this okay. uh, board meeting. So if you could just look at it, pay attention to the new ones. Um, I don't think there is one, uh, a brand new policy there. So a lot of footnotes, a lot of revisions there. So it, it's just taxing. We need to go through it. It's from your, uh, the board of uh, Illinois Association of School Board. Um, uh, it's coming from your organization. Uh, we got to do due diligence do to, um, to review uh, each of the policies that they administer. Yeah, and, and Patty, many of the policies come from legislation that sometimes it's passed in the spring and summer. So then there's that lag where they have to create the policies to react to the legislation. So there's implementation dates of the legislation. And so that's like what James says, at least twice a year where, where those policies are updated to reflect the legislative changes. Okay. And, and to put it, going back to what Sam is saying, if you don't act on it quickly, it could immediately, I mean, there's 25 now. Remember when we had 52 uh, last policy committee? <laughs> we want to yeah. stay on top of it so we don't have to review 100, 105. And once again, sure. it's not brand new policies. Or they are revision footnotes and, and things like that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And, uh, oh, and I just wanted to add that on May 12th um, is the DuPage Executive Committee meeting which I'll attend, and that's where we're going to uh, work on the DuPage Fall uh, Division me um, dinner meeting. So we'll see if um, uh, whether that's going to be pushed off or whether it'll be um, a virtual meeting, you know, and uh, I'll let you know once that's decided, but that's May 12th. Um, the next board meeting is uh, May 27th, 
at 7 p.m. with a policy committee meeting at 5.30, uh, right before the board meeting. Um, does anyone, or let's see, yeah, does anyone have any new business to, to discuss? Just a friendly reminder, uh, board, if you haven't completed your economic interest survey, uh, please do so. Uh, we need to do that. It's, uh, uh, it's being asked by the county clerk. Um, Mary should have um, sent you an email if you haven't completed already. So I can I do, today. Uh, so Thank I don't you. have to go and do it in person. I forget how that works. Uh, obviously, it's the everything's closed down. I don't, it's online. It's online. I can do it online. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I did mine just today, and it's it's just a link, Julia. So you want to know, like the link. It'll be your link. I I, I, I know I. I thought I had to go in person. Maybe I Juliet, I'll just online. You should have sent you an email, Juliet, from the county. Did you receive that? I did see it uh, today. I saw it, so I oh. will fill it out. But for some reason, I thought I was going to have to drop it off in person. No, I thought that was going to create an issue. Okay. No, no there's an electronic um, signature in a box that you choose. Okay. Could I, right. could I have uh, uh, an opinion on, on the board, on from the board on something? No. And so I, I just thought because about we're this. All, so because we're at home and, uh, you know, my commute's shorter. I, w I was wondering if anyone would be uh, open to moving our, our board meeting time an hour earlier. Would that hurt anyone or yeah. that benefit more of us? Mary Ann would make it. I yeah. would not be, it would be a, a stretch for me to make it. I am still working. Okay, okay. Then then that's that's exa exactly what uh, it would be good. Okay, all right, thank you. So you're still good with that, Kit? I mean, that'll still oh, work? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Keep keep it. I, I, if it was a, a consensus, I, I, it'd be great. But if, if not, just if one person's hurt, that's no big deal. No big deal. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, um, all right, now we need to move to a closed session. Um, may I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the purpose of the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employers of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its, valid, its validity. However, meeting to consider an increase in compensation to a specific employee of a public body that is subject to the Local Government Wage Increase Transparency Act may not be closed and shall be open to the public and posted and held in accordance with this Act 5 ILCS 120-2C1 and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more class, classes of employees according to 5 ILCS 120-2, Section C, uh, Paragraph 2. Uh, may, I, may I have a motion? Yes. Uh, thank you, Jackie. May I have a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Marianne. Uh, roll call, please, Mary. What happened? Where'd she go? Peyton Howe? Yep. Yes. King Paul Pong? Yes. Galloway? Jalowick? Betty? Patty, you're on mute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mary go? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now before we break, is everyone clear that we're closing out of this one, out of this session? and going into connecting through the next email that 
Jim Bat's consent um, in order to go into closed session. So we don't but leave this open. open. We do leave this open, and we don't. Hey, Jim. I think, I think we need to leave it go open. to the closed session. Um, let's ask Jim. Jim, are you there? Okay, I, I didn't catch you. Had the second. I did. Marianne. Okay, Marianne. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Take your temperature. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bite it's your tongue. Like allergies. That's allergies. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Better be. Okay. Now we're we are in open session. No, we're. I'm. I'm with. No, we have to. We have to drop off of this, hang up, and then go back to the other one. No, no, no we don't. No. We're not going to do that. No, no we're not doing oh, that. Okay. We're doing it right now. For me, Jim Batson's going to connect us right that? to open session. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. we were going to close out of here. Get out of here. Right. We just need the roll. The roll call, Mary. Just just the roll call. Peyton Hell. Yeah. Rego. Yes. Ramirez. Yes. Pong. Yes. <laughs> no one. Yes. Wiedemann. Yes. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mary. Thank uh, you, thanks, Mary. Mary. Thank thanks, you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, 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 Mary.